David heard those songs up for no reason. <laughs> He's trying to rush me up here. Um, I'm nervous, y'all. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be. I thought I was good, but I'm nervous. So y'all pray for me. Um, and I've got a bunch that I'm going to go over tonight. Uh, but I'm not like John. I don't have three points on three points uh, for two verses. So, uh, <laughs> so this may only take a few minutes. So. Um, y'all pray for me. Um, we're going to be in 1 John uh, chapter 4. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, pray. Dear Lord God, uh, please get me out of the way. And uh, please uh, help me uh, get your message out here for everybody uh, that you'd have me uh, show them tonight. Uh, be with me and uh, guide what I'm going to say. And all these things we ask in your great and powerful name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, so, I'm feeding you back, Josh. Um, all right. In chapter 7 here, or chapter 4, verse 7, uh, I'm going to read the first part, and then I'm going to read a little bit more later on, and then a little bit more. Um, in verse 7, it starts off with, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his Son for the propitiation uh, of our sins. If you don't hear anything else that I say tonight, Jesus loves you. Amen. He doesn't care what you look like, what you've done. He loves you. And he wouldn't ever have to, but he would die for you again. So, in this letter, John starts out by telling the church to love one another. Because just like now, uh, the church had forgotten that. Um, he reminded them that our love comes from God and that you're capable to love because of God. Amen. As humans, we can't understand that depth uh, of the love that God has for us and the compassion that he has for us, even though we mess up time and time again. Um, in the Old Testament, it's full of examples of how uh, God loved Israel and gave them chance after chance, even though uh, they experienced so much more in, in, in physical form. Uh, they would wander off again and again. But uh, he always loved them and brought them back. And uh, so when you know God, you know what love is. You can see it. It's, yeah. it's manifest in you. Amen. Uh, and you know, the most obvious sign that he gave us is that he sent Jesus for us to die. So us non-Jewish people would have a chance. Uh, without that, we wouldn't. Uh, and he didn't send Jesus because we had been so good uh, at loving him in the past. Uh, it was because of his compassion for us. So moving on to verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love each, uh, love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby we know that we dwell in him, and he is in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And if we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. 
And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. John moves on to tell us that since God loves us so much, we should love one another. Jesus told the disciples in John 13, in the regular book of John, John 13, 34, to love one another. And that the Holy Spirit imparts the will to love uh, in the believer. Amen. And uh, so reading on further here. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth, casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? Amen. So, I believe that that's telling us to love boldly. And as Christians, we don't have the same fear as the unsaved. Our fear uh, turns more to a reverence rather than the fear of punishment that the unsaved is going to have to face one day. Amen. And uh, that last verse there really sticks with me. And over the years that I've felt the calls to preach... This message has always came to me, and that part is the one that always stuck out to me. If a man claims to love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. Jesus died to give us an opportunity to be saved. And it wasn't just for me, and it wasn't just for you. It wasn't just for the people who live their best lives throughout their lives. It's for everybody. God didn't want any of us to have to suffer. And that includes people who look different, who pe people who sin differently than we do. That's, uh, that's been tough for me over the years. For anybody that doesn't know, I'm a parole officer through the week. And when I first started, it was hard to look at some of the people uh, and see that Jesus loved them too. Uh, it was hard. Um, knowing the crimes that these people had committed. But to God, it, that doesn't matter. Any sin that I've ever committed was just as bad as theirs. And he loves them just as much as me. In the Bible, again, there's other examples uh, where Jesus saved sinners. Uh, he went to them. Uh, the woman that was about to be stoned in uh, John 8 uh, there, he didn't love her sin, but he loved her. Amen. And he didn't see her any different than the people that were there standing there with their rocks ready to throw them. We can become so focused on the sins that other people commit that we look down on them. Amen. And who are we? Amen. You know, we can't ever lose sight that Jesus loves those people. We have to, too. Amen. And we, we can't treat them badly. Uh, no. We have to come together. We have to get them in here. Uh, I'd seen a church sign back several months ago. It said, uh, love everybody and let God sort them out. Amen. And that's, that, that touched me too. When the Pharisees asked Jesus what was the greatest commandment, Jesus told them to love God and to love one another. 
It's our job to get them into the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will straighten them out. And it's been a little while since I've heard the expression, but I know most of you have heard it, that church is a hospital for the sinners, not a museum for the saints. So, I know that was kind of short and sweet, but that's that's what I've got. And uh, I guess as I do this more, I'll get a little bit more long-winded. <laughs> but I think that's what the Lord had had me say tonight. Thank you all for listening.